How's it going, people? Hope you're well. Um, listen, what a weekend of sport, football. Well, football, really. What a weekend of football. Um, it has to be said, guys, that um, anytime I look at the fixtures on a Saturday and don't get too excited, it always makes the Sunday a hell of a lot better. The only reason it makes the Sunday better is if your team wins. And it wasn't just that our team won. It was that everybody else seemed to drop points, other than, of course, Man City and Newcastle, who will come on to in a little while. Um, when I saw what I saw um, at the weekend with Haaland getting the last minute penalty, um, it frustrated me. And then I stopped and thought, why am I looking at Man City results? Like, this is Arsenal, right? I've never looked at Man City results and thought, what are Man City doing? Have Man City dropped points? But that shows where Arsenal have come in the last 12 months. It really has. Um, not even that long, if I'm honest. Maybe in the last six months. Um, it has been fantastic, uh, to say the least. And I look at the performance that I saw today, and there's a lot to be proud of. A lot to be proud of indeed. I do feel personally that there were some times where we could get a little bit frustrated, particularly in the first half with missed chances. But actually, when you look at the performance overall, it was very mature. It was very composed. I thought we controlled most of the game, dominated a lot of the ball. And to be fair, dominated a lot of chances, which we'll come on to as to why I was quite frustrating at times. But listen, what you can't be frustrated about is the result. In fact, we picked up three points at a big six club away from home. Um, and Stamford Bridge is a place that, let's be honest, the last couple of seasons, we haven't really gone there and looked like a shower of shite. We haven't really struggled of late. But it's always a performance that you need to put in there. You can never walk up there, turn up and go, do you know what? Three points, let's just turn up. And I feel personally today there was definitely um, signs of a good performance that was needed. I thought with Chelsea, as much as they were quite shocking, you look at the result, you look at the scoreline and you realise that it could be very different and it is fine margins when you come to playing in the Premier League football. But my goodness, what are we seeing at the moment from this side? I'll tell you what we're seeing from this side at the moment. What we have done in terms of our performance, of course, has been raised. But more importantly for me, up here, the mentality is flawless at the moment. And I think that you have to big up what Mikel Arteta has done with that. You have to, yeah? In the last... To the first, first 13 games now, we've seen 11 wins, one draw, one loss. I would have never imagined this, never in my wildest dreams. So now that it's happened, who do we credit? Well, it ain't just one man you credit. Of course, there's more than that. But you do have to look at that one guy at the moment and say, what is it that you've done in this last 13 games that you couldn't have done from last season? Yes, I understand the player quality is better, but really it's only Gabriel Martin, uh, Gabriel Jesus and Saliba of late that has come into this side. It's still the same players. So that proves that last year we've shown a little bit of development um, from some of our young players. What also it shows is there's a togetherness like I've never seen it before. I understand that uh, Gabriel Jesus has come and raised that level. I understand Saliba's improved us defensively. I understand that Zinchenko in that inverted fullback is a position that's definitely looked to improve. But really, he's played three or four games out of the 13 so far. For me, mentally, we look so good, like so together, different. You know, Granite Chaka's come out and swore in an interview because he's looking at that atmosphere like he's never seen it before. And fair play to him, by the way. It was great to see. There's a lot of good things happening right now. And you know what? And I say this now to you, Gooners, right? And I know there's people in the chat that don't support Arsenal that watch me and listen to me and big up yourselves too. How scared are you of Arsenal? People aren't honest. People have been trying to say anything but Arsenal are in a title race. People have been trying to say anything but Arsenal are not going to fall off. They've been trying to say that this is not going to last. They're not sustainable. They haven't got the squad depth. And now they're starting to see... Maybe this is a bit of a different Arsenal. Now, I still have concerns, of course, that our squad's big enough. And I do believe that if we go into January and don't do anything, then it would be rather foolish. But we're not there yet. We can't spend anything. The window's not open. The World Cup is not over. But do you know what? The way that I've seen this side improve in the, last, in the first 13 games is nothing short of sensational, right? And I'll tell you this now. When I see performances like that, it gives you goosebumps, your heart goes, your acceleration of adrenaline is there. There's a togetherness and belief that this is a part of a uh, a kind of experience that you're experiencing along with it. You're part of it. And this is what we all watch football for, guys. There's, it's impossible to not get excited right now, being an Arsenal fan. You can't sit there and tell me that you're an Arsenal fan right now and are not enjoying watching the football, not excited by it, and don't feel something is different. 
There's no way you can. You can definitely question whether it's going to be sustainable. As an Arsenal fan, you might still have concerns. You might get frustrated that we're still not great in the final third at times or that we're missing our chances or that we're creating stuff that we should be killing off games. I get all that. But right now, what we're seeing is enjoyable football. The football we're playing in parts of that game today was sensational to watch. What a weekend I've had. I've had an unbelievably good birthday week for me and a great weekend. I saw us win on Thursday night at my birthday and saw Kieran Tierney score. I go into the weekend, spend it with family, and I see results going our way. But the most important one was today at Stamford Bridge. Let's talk a little bit about the overall performance. I thought as a team, we were playing some really nice football. And when I look at the brand of style of play that Arteta is now starting to mould in over the last, let's say, let's be kind, let's say 12 to 18 months. I've started to see 12 to 18 months ago some passing in triangles, some playing out from the back, some high intensity off the ball. But it weren't consistent enough. And the results showed why. I think these last 13 games that I've seen in the start to this Premier League season, it is clear to see that we have a very attractive style of play, that this passing in triangles has now got a lot more fluid. There's an understanding of the inverted fullback role when it is played with Zinchenko and obviously Tommy Asu of late. There's an understanding going forward between Saka, Martinelli and Jesus that has been brought forward and already come out of their mouths saying that they're machines. The menace that Jesus is in terms of his work rate off the ball has had nothing but a positive influence across the whole of that team. The new role from Granite Chaka has been sensational. Another player who was brilliant again today. The Thomas Party that I see is definitely a better Thomas Party and more like the one that I saw at Atletico Madrid. Martin Erdegaard's work rate cannot be denied. I look at what Ben White is doing at the moment. It's fantastic. If he isn't on that plane and Gareth Southgate doesn't pick him, I would sack him on the spot. That's how poor that would be of a decision if he doesn't go to the England squad for the World Cup. And the partnership in the middle between Gabriel and Saliba is one of the best we've had or the, probably will be the best we, we I've seen probably since the Colo Torre and Sol Campbell partnership. It is that good. They complement each other so well. So let's talk about some of the performances individually today because I've mentioned what we like about the season so far. Today's performance, there was two complete standouts for me and one that I thought never, ever give up. The one player that never gives up is Gabriel Jesus. I don't think I've seen a player work that hard on a football pitch across 90 minutes in my lifetime, not just the Arsenal. I never saw this guy stop running. The work rate, the intensity, the tenacity, it is outstanding. It is world class. I'll tell you that. It is world class. And I believe that if you were to add goals to his game, he'd probably be up there one of the best in the world. And that's at the moment what he's lacking. He's gone nine games without a goal. It would be concerning if it was a Lacazette. It would be concerning if it was a Bamiyang. But because what Jesus is doing is so, so important to that team and we're winning games and we're scoring goals in other departments of the team, as much as I still feel he needs to score goals, he's getting away with it because of the, the amount of intense work rate that he's putting in. And I look at this right now, guys, and I'm going to say this. I think that signing could go down as one of the greatest signings that Arsenal have made. And I say this for two reasons. One, because of the performances we're seeing. But two, because of that age at 25, that not only he's got left in him, but the experience that he's got in terms of a winning mentality, the influence he's had on everybody else has taken us from OK to not bad to, wow, you're looking pretty crazily good at the moment. Now, that for me has had a positive influence on not just Martinelli, but also Saka. I think Granite Chaka on that left-hand side, because Jesus is doing a bit of an Henri and going over that left side a lot, has definitely improved his game when linking up and going forward. I think when Zinchenko does play, he obviously already knows Jesus quite well. So that left-hand side becomes even stronger. And I'm starting to scratch my head thinking, wow, how did we actually get this guy? Because he wasn't expensive, by the way. He was about 45 to 50 million, which for a centre forward is actually not a lot. Now, I know people will compare that to Haaland, but Haaland had a release clause. That was the only reason he was 50 million. Otherwise, if his score scoring, you'd be looking at saying, well, if Harry Kane's worth 100 or 150, this guy's nearer 200. So when you look at what we got for Gabriel Jesus, what we paid, it was outstanding. Great bit of business. And I'm going to compare it to Alexis Sanchez for the reason that when we signed him, he was already in a good Barcelona side that he wasn't really performing into the highest of his level. He wasn't really given that chance. He wasn't really the focal point. He wanted to be the big dog, but he had the Messi's, he had the Chavis and Iniesta's. He had the Fabregas's, believe it or not, at the time, I believe as well. I look at that right now and think that is a very similar signing. 
to a player that we had in Alexis Sanchez. It's not just the fact that he looks like him, because there's parts of his game where I would say that he's better than Alexis Sanchez. Alexis Sanchez used to lose the ball quite a lot, by the way. The difference was he won it back. He didn't give up and he scored goals. In front of goal, I think Alexis Sanchez, at the moment, you'd say you'd have more faith in. But with Gabriel Jesus, every other part of his game is so, so positively strong. So I'm a massive fan of what we've done with this guy. Then I need to look at the other two performances today that I thought was basically a flip of a coin for man of the match. The first one was Thomas Partey. I probably would have given him man of the match, but I thought today it was an unbelievably strong, composed and confident performance. In a midfield, let's be honest, we need to boss right now. When it comes to Chelsea's midfield, they don't have that Thomas Partey. They're still using Jorginho. They still don't know whether to play Gallagher in there with him, Kovacic in there with him. They don't know whether they want Kante back yet or not. They're not sure whether Denis Zakaria is going to be that guy, whether it's Loftus-Cheek. They're still not sure. Graham Potter's experimenting. But we knew Jorginho, or I knew Jorginho was going to play in that role. I thought Partey today showed Chelsea everything they're missing. I thought he was brilliant. I thought he bullied Chelsea. I thought he was the best at every ball. I thought he won every duel. I thought he was getting in there and showing his strength. I felt that every time that he got the ball, he used his body well to either allow them to foul him if they wanted the ball or just keep the ball himself. The spray passing I saw was sensational. And it looked to me that every time he got the ball, everybody was, he was finding he was finding, he was passing. And sometimes with Partey, he's that, mid, he's that midfielder that sometimes just bosses it by using his strength, using his brute strength. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I feel today there was even more than that with Thomas Partey's performance. The passing was electric. The winning the ball back was electric. Every single time I was watching that game, I felt myself going, wow, party again. Wow, party again. Wow, party again. Oh, party's won the ball again. Oh, party's passed the ball again. Oh, that was a nice pass. It was Thomas Party. When you start doing that, you think, yeah, this is a man of the match performance. Like, this is a man of the match performance. And although Odegaard I didn't think was great again today, I do look at his work rate and I, and I, and I just think that I, some people are in awe of it. Um, I admire it. I admire his work rate. He doesn't stop running. I understand it's frustrating again today. I think he should have scored. I don't have that confidence with him in front of goal, but he does definitely have some unbelievable technical ability and work rate. So fair play to him. Granite Chaka, likewise, I think Thomas Partey and him complement each other. I think what Granite Chaka and Thomas Partey are doing in this Arsenal midfield is making it the best it's been since we went unbeatable with Gilbert Owens and, uh, and Vieira. I really do. And I'm not saying that either of those have got the quality to be better than them. I don't think they have. I don't think we'll get another Vieira and Gilberto. But this is the strongest our midfield has been since then because we've always had a good Fabregas or Cazorla. But when have we ever had a defensive player that complements a Fabregas? We never really did. We never had one with Cazorla. That's for sure. It was normally Chaka <laughs> who played there. Over the years, Coquelin did well, but wasn't really a Thomas Party. I don't think Alex Song was a Thomas Party. I don't, I don't think that Granite Chaka was a Thomas party. Um, and we've had others in there as well that you, I just never really made it at the Arsenal. But I look at what I'm looking at right now. And I think we've got a very, very, very good midfield right now. And a midfield free, that is, as well. So I come on to the player that got man of the match. Um, I keep saying it. Never seen someone as good as this at 21 years old. I thought the defensive performance from William Saliba today was flawless absolutely outstanding. And again, like party, I kept saying, he's done it again. Another tackle from William Saliba, another great pass. And every time the ball comes towards him, there's the confidence he's going to win it. Every time you go into that duel with him, you feel confident that William Saliba is going to win that ball. He's going to pass it correctly. He's not going to do anything sloppy, not going to do anything silly. He uses his strength and all of his attributes to get what I believe is the best out of a player that I think is going to be ceiling ridiculously high. Like people are talking about Van Dyke. I think at Van Dyke's age and Saliba's age, Saliba was head and shoulders above him. Yeah. Look at Rio Ferdinand at Manchester United. When he was at West Ham and Leeds, he was like, this guy's good. Like he is really good. Man United are going to snap him up soon. Sure enough, they did. He was about 21 year there at West Ham and Leeds. And I thought, wow, I haven't done that since. 21 years old. People talk about... Let's think of another... I'll tell you what. This is a good comparison. Let me think of another young centre-back people are talking about. De Ligt, right? Let's look at De Ligt's performances at that age, which is at around the same sort of age. I think he's a bit older now. But he was really young when people were talking about him. I look at Saliba as up there. De Ligt is a good centre-half, by the way. He's not been great when these events didn't work out. He's now gone to Bayern Munich. Saliba, 
uh, for me, what I've seen from France and England, I'm sorry, this guy is going to be an unbelievable player. And Craig has said it here. Dan, I've said this before. Saliba reminds me of the great David O'Leary. So calm on the ball. And do you know what? I can't sit there and say you're right or wrong, Craig, because unfortunately that's before my time. David O'Leary, I started watching around about 92 uh, Arsenal. So I don't remember, but all I know is how great that he was. And people talk about him very, very highly. Saliba, wow. If he's going to be as good as him, pff, fair play. <laughs> fair play. Um, get your questions in, guys, because I really want to know what you thought of it. Any questions you have for him, make sure you put a cue next to it so that I know it's a question and I'll take some of those before we do wrap up. But I believe William Saliba is going to be one of the best players that we have out of our current young cropper players. I think he's going to be, I think his ceiling's higher than Saka. I think it's higher than Martinelli and Smith Rowe. And I do look at some of the other youngsters in and around there. I just don't see them as good as this guy. I honestly believe that him and Gabriel formed a partnership that is complementary of each other. And I understand people say Bozo Gene about Gabriel, but look who scored again today. He is scoring goals again this season. He scored five or six last season, which was the most of any defender. And then I look at what he's done this season. I think he's got this is his third goal already, or maybe two or three already. We've played 13 games. Mate, this guy is an absolute nuisance in the box. A lot of people were comparing the goal to uh, saying that... Um, Sorry, they were talking about the goal saying, was that Saka's goal? I don't know how. That was really never close to being Saka's goal. It was always Gabriel's. So a fantastic goal. And I felt personally that it was quite ironic that we scored from a corner today because some of them were shocking. <laughs> some of our shocking, some of our performance uh, corners today were shocking. Saka, bless him. I didn't feel like he had the best games in parts today. But my God, he never stopped. But for me... The corner that comes in, we score from, was actually a really good cross. Um, I think with Chelsea, I think some of their players will be happy with their performance. Some of their players won't be. We'll come to Aubameyang in a minute. But for me, I just feel like they're still in transition at the moment. And Potter's trying to work out what they want. They're, funnily enough, only 18 months or so away from... No, not even that. I don't know how long ago it was now they won the Champions League, but it weren't long ago. And now all of a sudden, they've gone from a Champions League winning side under Tuchel to a transitional side under Potter within what seems like about, I don't know, nine months. It's absolute crazy to think that that is the case, but it is. And we have to look at that and think, how has that happened? But who cares? Like, honestly, who cares? People say, oh, where do you think it's going wrong? I don't care. I don't care that it's going wrong for Chelsea. For 15 years, I've had to watch that side win trophies. For 15 to 20 years, I've had to watch that side beat Arsenal in finals and get ahead of them in the league and win Champions Leagues and Europa Leagues. I'm so happy that they're in a mess at the moment. It's great to see for me. I don't care that that ain't happening right now. For me, Arsenal are in a title race. I don't care what anybody says. 13 games in, one loss, one draw, 11 wins. You are. 100% we are. So for me, I'm looking at things right now and I'm really excited about the future of this club. And the reason I'm really excited about the future of this club is because everything at the moment that we're touching is going well. We've got a good amount of um, uh, attractive style of play. We've got a young side that's only going to develop and get better. We've got a coach who, for me, has proved a hell of a lot that he's learned from a lot of bad mistakes that he's made in the last two, three years. But fair play to him. And I look at what's actually going on upstairs at the moment, and I'm quietly confident from the rumours we're hearing that they're going to go and spend in January and give us a chance of a title push. That is what I need to see happening. I don't want to go and sign Danilo from Brazil and go, that's all we need, let's go again. I need to go and see three or four, maybe, maybe you know, three at least uh, players in January coming through the door to give us a little bit of strength and depth on that, bed, on that bench because Smith Rowe's still to come back, but otherwise, we're looking like we're struggling in certain areas, in my, in my opinion. Today, Who's going to come on for Jesus? Eddie's not on form. He can't do it. Who's going to come on for party? The Congo can't do it. We need to go and look now at where we can strengthen. And in my opinion, midfield, wide forward and centre forward are the three positions that we need. Um, let's take some of your questions. I've got some here. Um, where are we? Where's going to my chat? Here we go. Um, this has come from Roscoe. It says, if we get one player in January to improve us, who would you want in? Well, I definitely want more than one, uh, Roscoe. I can't lie. I actually feel like with Elneny coming back, I feel like we're weaker probably across the in the forward line now. And I think Wilfred Zaha will be the one that I'll go and get now. Scored again today, Premier League proven, massive Arsenal player. Imagine him wanting out of the club and finally going and giving a title challenge with the team that he supports. I'd love to go and see us get Wilfred Zaha. I'm not sure how much it would cost, but I think he'd be the one that I'd want. 
if I'm honest with you. PSG wants Saliba, says Craig. Yeah, do you know what? I've heard a lot of rumours about Real Madrid and PSG sniffing around this guy. Do you know what? Why wouldn't they be? He is a player that's going to be unbelievably good in the near future, and I can understand why people want him. I look at what people are doing now within the scouting system, and I understand why he's a player that they'll want. Um, I don't think that we can do anything but mess around. We need to go and uh, we, we can't be messing around, sorry, with this situation, with his contract. We need to go and get it sorted. It is absolutely mad if we don't. Uh, May Salmon says, Dan, bro, you don't remember me, but we had quite a debate on Harry's channel earlier on Arteta's reign. How far have we come since? Well, May Sam, I do actually remember you, bro. And uh, big up yourself for watching. I much appreciate you being there. Apologies. I'm going to take this off. One, because it's a beautiful shirt underneath it. And two, because I'm getting very warm. Uh, May Sam, I do remember you. And you know what? We had a little bit of a, not disagreement, I would say debate, as you call it, about where we were with things and how far away we were from the title and how far away I thought we were from getting the top four. And I think justifiably so. I was a little bit of an angry Arsenal fan at the time because things were not great. And like you say, look how far we've come. Um, it's been brilliant. It really has. And you know what? I do need to apologise to Mikel Arteta over things I've said previously because perhaps I was a little bit too harsh on him. Um I think some of the stuff I said was very justified. I think when you lose to Everton, Man United and Liverpool, tell me an Arsenal fan that's going to say, trust the process, we're happy. I never really wanted that. I didn't see that we were going in the right place. I felt that it was too much to do and I felt that it was going to take too long. Three years later, in my opinion, that's quite a long time. But I forget about that now. <laughs> I've gone through that three years of hell. Let's hope that things are looking up because certainly it looks like that way. At the moment, uh, Craig says, Dan, if Fafana was worth 80 million, how much is Saliba worth? Surely 100 million. It's mad, isn't it, to think how much defenders are now going for. Um, if Harry Maguire is worth 80, then Saliba is worth 180. I hope that sums it up for you because I don't think Harry Maguire is anything good at all. Mr. Waffle said, would you take Madison over Erdegaard? Uh, yes, I would. 100 percent. I like Martin Erdegaard. I think they're both very different players. Madison scores. Erdegaard doesn't. Madison assists. Erdegaard doesn't. And I think he's showing him up yet again. And I know that people get the hump when I say it. It's just factual. Um, if people don't rate, rate James Madison, you can't like football. I'm sorry. You can't like football. This is a guy who's on a Leicester City side that are doing terrible, by the way. And in the last couple of games have started winning. And he is absolutely killing it, mate. I'll take James Madison and Tienemans tomorrow. I think both of them would be brilliant for Arsenal. Um, so I uh, hope that, that answers your question, Mr. Waffle. Big up yourself. Uh, uh, here we go. George, my question is, where is the Arteta out crew from a few months ago? Well, first of all, I hate Arteta out because I don't think it's Arteta out, Arteta in. Which one are you? We're all Arsenal in, right? We all want Arsenal to win. You can have question marks over Mikel Arteta or you can really appreciate what he's doing. But there ain't this in, out, in, out, shake it all about business, right? Now, some fans do. And I appreciate, George, that you're one who's saying that there is a lot of Arsenal um, Arteta outers. You can say this about both ways, though, my guy, because against Newcastle and Tottenham, the Arteta inners were all silent. Now, they're all very loud. And you know what? I hope that we can all be loud together because for me, I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I'm going to end on this one. I'm going to end on this one. Do you know why I'm going to end on this one? Because this is the title of this podcast. Are we in a title race? Yes, we are. I don't care whether you say that a title race um, is only important in May because I'm one of those people who does say it. If you ask me the question, what are Arsenal in right now? We're in a title race. How can we not be? We're 13 games in. There's one game left before the World Cup and we're top of the league. You can't sit there and say that Arsenal are not in a title race. Whether you think they're still going to be there in March or May or April or February is a completely different question. But for me, I think N. Gibbs, you're right to sum this up. Of course we are. Um... I just want to touch on this very quickly because I was going to quickly touch on City and Newcastle's performances. I think literally they are the two at the moment I'm looking at and going, oh, OK, OK, yep, you're up there with us, aren't you? Man City, did I think that was a penalty for City? <sighs> yeah, he made a massive meal of it. Maybe if he's touched him, you've got to sit there and say it's a penalty. But is De Bruyne really needing to go down like that? Um, I thought Leno should have saved the penalty, by the way. I really did. But I was really impressed um, with Fulham's performances like I have been for most of this season, to be fair. And I've also been impressed with Newcastle. I still think Manchester City can win the league, lads. I do. I stand by it. But if we can be in and around a title race, 
then I don't think anybody can be Arteta out, as George said earlier, um, because that for me is just not the case. When I look at what Newcastle are doing, it's quite scary. And the reason I say it's quite scary is because they're going to spend again in January and they've only got one game a week. Now, when we had one game a week, I thought with the team we had from last season, that was one of the main reasons that we had a chance to get in top four. And I think Newcastle were in the same boat. That's the one reason they've got a chance to get in top four is because they've got one game a week and they're going to spend. And if they get Zaha, Madison, Tiedemans and go nuts, then they're definitely going to have a great chance of getting it. Even if they get one or two players, which let's be honest, Newcastle haven't gone mad yet. They've actually only signed Isaac and Bruno Guimaraes that are quite a lot of money. Everybody else has been like Dan Byrne, Kieran Trippier, Sven Botman. Um, and players that have boosted their squad up, as opposed to uh, Chris Wood, people like that. Um, so they've all boosted their squad up. I think when you look at what they've done at the moment, Eddie Howe deserves a hell of a lot of credit. Yeah, the signing of Joe Willock and Chris Wood has helped them out massively. He's still got players like John Joe Shelby in and around the team that people think is now gone. And lost, that no, he's still in and around that side. Joe Linton, unbelievable new position. Eddie Howe deserves credit for Miguel Almiron's form, who cannot stop scoring at the moment. He's got Dan Byrne into a in my opinion, an England shout. So when you look at what he's done, that spine is great now. Pope, Shah, Botman, Bruno Guimaraes, Joe Linton, Almiron, Callum Wilson, Alexander Isaac. He's still got St. Maximan who's now come back. Yeah, they're a problem. Newcastle, don't worry. They're a problem. Trust me. Are they going to win the league? No. Are they going to get second or third? I don't think so. Are they going to sneak fourth? I'd probably put my money if I had it now and say, yeah, I think they will get fourth. I think they will get fourth. I really do. Um, Manchester United look too inconsistent still and they're starting to play nice football but I still see performances the other week against the first United team that they nearly lost to ended up sneaking a, sneaking a win didn't think they looked convincing the other night against Sociedad obviously they've lost today under Unai Emery good evenings uh, team I look now and think yeah Manchester United are a little bit too inconsistent for me and I still think they've got a weak squad Chelsea I don't know what I'm going to get Liverpool and Tottenham we saw that today I love the fact that Tottenham lost that but they still had chances to either win that game or draw that game. So Tottenham are going to be in and around that top four. Whether they're going to get it along with Chelsea, Liverpool, United, I really don't know. But I think, for me, Conte probably does get them top four. Kulisevsky's back now and he come on and look good. When Richarlison comes back and they get some of their squad players back, I think they'll start to pick up wins. If I was to go for a top four right now, I'd put Newcastle in it along with Arsenal, Man City and Spurs. I think United, Liverpool and Chelsea look like they're going to miss out because they just don't know what they're going to get. And I think Chelsea are going to perform against Brighton or against us and not get it. Then they're going to go and win a couple of games. Likewise, I think Manchester United and Liverpool are way too um, inconsistent. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a real tight one. Um, let's take this one to end, actually, because this was something I did want to touch on. Um, OK, I've picked up Mikel Arteta. I'd also like to big up this guy because I feel like he needed to go at Arsenal. Big time. He needed to go with Naimri. Um, He really did, by the way. <laughs> I think they down tools on him. I think he'd lost his way. I don't really understand some of the tactics that he uh, implemented at Arsenal, i.e. Lucas Torreira in a number 10. But actually, when you look at what he did do, there was a lot of good things at Arsenal. And I always felt that he'd go on and be a good manager somewhere else. Now, he did a really good job at Sevilla. He did a really good job at Villarreal. He did a good job uh, at PSG. And he's done, in my opinion, a really good start to his career at Aston Villa. And I think that Aston Villa have got a good side there. I think that it's under, been underperforming under Steven Gerrard. And I think what Unai Emery will do is show everybody that actually some of the players Aston Villa have got ain't half bad. And I do feel that he will get the best out of some of those players because he's done it before. He's won four Europa Leagues, three with Seville, one with Villarreal. Not big teams, by the way. He didn't take Barcelona to Europa League. He's taken Villarreal and Seville to Europa League. I also feel what he did with Arsenal was actually quite good, particularly in his first season when he went 22 games unbeaten, got to a Europa League final and finished a point off the top four with a squad that consisted of Petr Cech, Bellerin, Socrates, Mustafi, David Luiz, Nacho Monreal, Iwobi, Mikatarian, Danny Welbeck, El Neni, Lucas Torreira, Granit Xhaka at the time, and obviously Lacazette and Aubameyang. Now, I think... Personally, that team is pretty cack. And so does Mikel Arteta because he's got rid of the whole lot of them, right? And he managed to get them to 22 games unbeaten, a European final, a Europa League final, sorry. And of course, one point off the top four. Unfortunately for him, nine, 10 games in, things had gone wrong. They down tools and he had to go. 
But it doesn't mean he's a bad manager, and I think he'll do well at Aston Villa. I really do. So I think it'll be interesting to see what he does this season. I think he's got a point to prove, Unai Emery. He's got a point to prove. I think in England he was treated pretty harshly by a lot of people on social media, talking about his language is poor and his accent's terrible and he can't speak English and no one can understand him and he's a poor communicator. But actually, I felt he come across as a really nice guy. And I feel personally like we're in a better place now without him, of course. Three years ago, I probably would have said we weren't, but we are 100%. People always say, who's the better manager? Well, Emery's the better manager. But who's better for Arsenal right now? It's Mikel Arteta because of the way that we're doing things and going about our business. And it's beautiful to see. Arsenal in a title race, guys. Arsenal are in a title race. I don't care. Anybody tells me they are in a title race. And I've now accepted that. And I don't care if that means I've got to come out with chest against other teams or if I've got to tell you right now, stop beating around the bush, are we or aren't we? Yes, we are in a title race. Are we going to stay there is another question. Is it sustainable is another question. Are Arsenal going to spend in January and allow that to be sustainable? I really hope so. If we don't, I think it's a foolish thing to do from the Cronkies. And I think Arteta and this board now need to be backed and they need to go and sort out the defensive midfield, the midfield area as a whole, the forward line and the wide forward. Because for me, if we lose Saka Martinelli or... Um, party or Jesus, we are going to struggle because we've seen in the Europa League that it don't look that great with our second uh, string team out there. But you know what? Things look so good at the moment and I'm absolutely delighted for that to be happening. For me, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch Arsenal so far this season and we go in now against Brighton in the League Cup and Wolves away, hoping that we can um, go forward in the next round of the Carabao Cup because I think the League Cup's still important. And of course, beating Wolves away from home who are struggling, let's be honest, defensively and up top scoring goals at the moment. So for me, I would absolutely love to see a victory there and Arsenal go top of that league into the World Cup. That for me is absolutely key. Last but not least, the super chat of the day. We've got all we've, we've all got to admit we're living a dream. Impressed with Arteta's proactiveness in planning for potential January transfers. Exciting times come on you Gunners. Nick Hill, thank you so much for your super chat, my guy. And I honestly believe that that will happen. I have a lot of faith this time that in January we won't mess up again because we did it last year. In the summer, I still didn't feel the pieces of the puzzle were quite there, although I thought Jesus was a good signing as well as Zinchenko. I still think we needed more and it's proven that we do. Centre midfield needs sorting. Wide forward needs sorted. Centre forward needs sorting. And I know it's hard. I get the ambition needs to be there and sometimes you can't always get the players, but we need to strengthen. If we don't, I don't think we're going to be in a title race. But at the moment, we 100% are. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash the like on this video and please subscribe to the channel. I'm literally a few away from 6K. I was hoping to get it for my birthday. If you can do that for me now, I reckon with over 300 people watching live that we will definitely get me up to the 6K and I can throw a party and it will make up my birthday weekend, my Arsenal weekend and my football weekend even better if you can do that for me by the end of this video. I would love you forever. Thank you all so much, guys. Smash a like on your way out. Hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free to do both and it really does help the channel grow. We're going to be back tomorrow um, talking all things Arsenal and then on Tuesday and Thursday, we've got Race for Europe show and a really special one on Thursday because Dan Lawless is joining the Best of the Rest show. So please um, make sure that you're you're following us for that one. Smash a subscribe, smash a like, hit the notification bell so you know when we're next on for those shows and we will see you next time, guys. Up the Arsenal.